a gardener hiding out in witness protection is asked to take in the estate owner's troubled young niece as his apprentice. However, the younger woman is involved with a dangerous crowd. As the gardener falls for and helps the young woman, his horrific and crime-filled past slowly gets revealed. Let's find out what the story is with this gardener. Narvel Roth, chief gardener, is preparing his staff for a gala charity event for the estate of Miss Norma Haverhill, a privileged dowager and owner of Gracewood Gardens. She has summoned him for a favor. Norma explains that her grandniece, Maya, noting that she is of mixed race, has fallen into a bad crowd after the death of her mother. Norma would like her to serve as Roth's apprentice and teach her gardening skills, or so she says. However, the bitter old woman has ulterior motives regarding this young lady. She tells Roth that his influence might set Maya on a more righteous path. Over the years, Roth has read hundreds of books about gardening. He sees it as making the future, as each new seed becomes a unique and beautiful flower when tended to properly. He sees the cultivations of seeds in a symbolic and philosophical way. Maya arrives at his home, and he describes what her role will be as his student. Roth informs her she will be learning horticulture, botany, and biology. He introduces her to the rest of the staff, Isabel Maggie and Xavier. She fits in nicely and enjoys making a connection to nature. Each day, Maya works at the simple and peaceful garden grounds. But in the evening, a driver takes her to the neighborhood where she grew up. It's a harsh existence on the shady side of town. Roth has a dark past and has flashbacks to a violent life he grew up in, being that he was raised by white supremacists. He looks in the mirror and his body is covered in tattoos from the white power gang he belonged to. Ah, how mysterious it is that he wound up at Gracewood Estates. Maya and the crew celebrate her two-week anniversary, but Norma still has not yet greeted her. Roth has his weekly dinner alone with Norma in the big house. She calls Roth Sweet Pea. The two talk about Maya and their upcoming charity auction. Norma informs him that her health has been failing and states she's made legal preparations for him to work at the gardens and inherit them for as long as he wishes. She then tells him to take her to bed. This is their weekly routine and it's been going on since he started there 10 years earlier. Well, I guess it's just part of the job. Roth has a flashback to his gang days, where he was asked to do something against his morals. The next day, Norma visits her grandniece on the planting grounds, and they have a snack together. The two haven't spoken since she was a small child. At first, they exchange pleasantries, but Norma cannot help but bring up her bad mother, who had an unscrupulous lifestyle. Maya says her mother felt inadequate in her presence, so she kept a distance. Norma feels she is morally and socially above Maya, and the two let out their negative feelings toward each other. Norma walks out telling her she's impertinent, way below her, and needs to show more respect and appreciation for being given this opportunity. The next day, Roth gives Maya a lesson on plant classification, and compares it to how people often classify others in similar ways. He brings up the meeting with Norma and gives good advice on how to get along with her, for he knows she can be a nasty woman. Maya kisses him on the cheek at the end of the lesson. A few days later, Xavier knocks on Roth's door, informing him Maya has been injured. Maya came to work but tried to hide her bruises. She'd been beaten up. It's obvious that she's pretty wasted as well. They decide to treat her there rather than call the police, for she'd be tested at the hospital. Isabel thinks Norma finds Maya's dramatic life entertaining, that being the real reason she took her in. Norma is a vindictive woman. Maya says she's feeling better, but Roth wants her to tell him what happened, stating they're a family 
who won't tolerate one of their own getting beat up. She tells him that RG did this to her. He deals, and sometimes she helps him out with the selling. Maya says he beat her because he didn't like the earthy way she smelled from the gardening, and he demanded she quit. Roth suggests she stay at the property until this blows over. But when he asks Norma, she declines to allow Maya a room there, stating she needs to be held responsible for her actions. Norma invites Roth to their weekly rendezvous, but now he declines, stating he has other plans. Roth sets up a cot in the shed and sneaks Maya in. Janine, the maid, brings her food. Roth calls his handler, a probation officer, Oscar, setting up a meeting at a diner the next morning. We learn Roth is in witness protection and most of his old crowd of proud boys are dead or in prison. Many years ago, his father told him to kill a preacher for reporting them. Roth committed the murder, however, he refused to kill the man's wife and daughter who were witnesses. Roth then turned over a new leaf and testified against every one of his proud boy comrades. Oscar informs him there's still a bounty on his head for breaking up the gang, and any skinhead would be happy to kill him. Roth tells him about Maya, and his probation officer offers to send the police to threaten R.G. if he lays a hand on her again. It seems R.G. has a long rap sheet, and Oscar agrees to send law enforcement his way and put the heat on him. Oscar tells him he's retiring, and after that, he'll get a new case agent, and they'll never see each other again. Back at the garden, he informs Maya about what will happen to R.G., he confronts her about the illegal substances, and she admits she has a habit. Maya picks up on his substance overuse problem, for to be one is to know one, and questions him. Roth remains aloof about his past. He thinks the first seeds of love have begun to sprout, as he cares deeply for Maya. Later, he visits her in the shed, informing her that Norma has invited her to lunch and has picked out a dress for her to wear the next day. The two look at each other and begin to snuggle, but when Maya goes on, he freaks out and tells her not to touch him. At the luncheon, the two sit awkwardly, but Norma cannot help her cruel nature. She has had a bit too much wine and lashes out at her lover, accusing him of being too close with her grandniece and calling Maya trash. Maya runs out crying. Norma starts to shout she feels spurned by Roth's attraction to Maya. She fires the two of them and says she wants them both gone by tonight, even threatening him with going to his handler with a bad report. He thanks her and leaves. Roth goes to Maya telling her they must leave immediately. He asks her to trust him and hopes she'll join him for a while. She agrees but must go back to her place to pick up some stuff. As they drive by, she identifies R.G. and his dealers. She is taking a long time retrieving her things, so Roth drives up to R.G. and his sidekick, Sissy. They make fun of him, but he shows the shears and implies he'll use them if they come near Maya again. However, they have no fear and are menacing in return. When Maya finally comes out, she's out of sorts, and Roth knows she just had a fix. He makes her dump her pockets out and throw any substances away. The two get a hotel together and Roth nurses her through her withdrawal. He cares for her and the two go to an N.A. meeting. Roth discloses that gardening and plants helped him find the peaceful beauty in life after he got clean. Roth has a flashback to when he first went into witness protection, but had to leave his wife and five-year-old daughter behind never to see them again. Maya is feeling better after a few days as the two drive farther away looking for a fresh start. Roth and Maya are growing closer and he confides in her that he was married yet still is too afraid to share his shameful past. Instead, he tells her his daughter died and that's why the marriage failed. Back at the hotel, as Maya rests in bed, he removes his shirt, which reveals to her all the tattoos on his back and chest. She sees them all right, but remains quiet, for she's confused and frightened.
Finally, she confronts him the next day. He tells her he was a horrible person, but that's not him now. All he can say is now he's just a gardener and her friend, but he used to be someone else and thought she should know. She rejects that and states they need separate rooms and to soon part ways. Roth continues to write in his journal. Maya knocks on his door, telling him she is in love with the person he is now and can forgive his past. She says she will only be with him if he erases his past, and that means removing the tattoos, which he agrees to. The two become closer than ever. Afterwards, while driving, there is a special flower that only blooms one night of the year. The whole street is alight with their colors, and the two drive by in ecstasy at them. It is symbolic of their own new beginnings. Meanwhile, R.G. and Sissy have vandalized every flower at Gracewood and have drawn hateful symbols showing they know Roth's past. Janine calls Roth, begging him to return. Maya and Roth go there immediately and see the gardens in ruins. Norma is not hurt and gives him an antique gun, telling him to seek revenge on who did this. Roth also had some guns hidden at his home. Maya knows where to find the culprits, and the two go after them because if RG reveals their location, the skinheads will come for the both of them. Maya and Roth go to RG's party house, and Roth shoots the gun and has everyone leave except RG and Sissy. He gives Maya the gun to see if she can make it, but she walks away. Roth tells them they need to remember the pain they've caused. Roth returns to Norma and offers to restore the gardens, promising to have the estate restored for next year's gala charity event. Roth tells Norma that he and Maya will be living together as husband and wife. Norma calls that obscene and grabs the gun, but it's an unloaded display item. He tells her the relationship he had before was obscene, but what he has now is true love. Norma needs him and agrees to discuss it the next day. Maya has already begun painting her new home and she shares a dance with Ross. And they know everything will be all right and many new blissful seeds will be planted. So what are your thoughts on this tale of new beginnings? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified about when our next video is posted. Thanks for watching.